Hello, hello friends, hello Flutterful developers and welcome to API Flow YouTube channel. My name is Andre and today we will talk about API integrations and I will share five pro useful tips about API integrations in Flutterful. You can use them to boost your uh, development experience with Flutterfall. It's not very big list, but I build it from my own experience through the last few months working with Flutterfall with different projects and integrating different services. So let's go. So working with many APIs, many services where I came to the the best way to use any API will be to use Open API standard. Uh, what is Open API? It's a, a standard description of any API that is produced to be useful by applications, by other services, and many, many services, many different uh, platforms provide Open API definitions to allow you import it and use with your application automatically generate uh, api clients automatically uh, create data types for extension etc etc so when you work with flutterfall flutterfall already provide you ability to import open api definitions in api call section sadly this feature is available only on a pro uh, plan so if you don't use pro plan you need to create your uh, api calls manually but if you use pro plan which is uh, i advise you as professional developer you can import open api definitions let's check it how it works when you, for example we integrate mysql database using flutterflow platform and using api flow platform as integrator and I will uh, use my database, for example, uh, to import the orders table. Uh, this uh, allow me to uh, this interface allow me to select data entities I want to provide access to and to provide operations uh, to select operations which I want to provide for my database. So. API flow creates and allow you to download open API definition, which is very, very useful when you're working with large applications or you're working with specific API and you can upload this API definition and receive access to pre-made operations with all required parameters created and etc. You do not need to think what parameters will be available in my API, how to create them and etc. It's very powerful feature to save your time and to reduce amount of errors when you're working with different APIs, especially this complex one. So use this feature use uh, open API import feature and auto generation of API calls in Flutterfall platform. Another one question is security. When you assess some APIs, when you use external data, it's always important to take care of security. And I advise you never share any direct access data like connection string uh, details or like authorization tokens for your services, especially with admin access. If you use uh, specific services, uh, that, like for example, as API flow provides you with additional layer of security, is that allow you to hide credentials, to hide your access in uh, secure storage server side, do not expose them to client side into Flutter Flow application, to Flutter application, because you need to remember that Flutter code will be available to your client. Instead of sharing your access data, which you provide to API Flow, API Flow generate access tokens that you need to use in your application. And this access token provides access only to APIs, only to endpoints and to data entities that you allow. So if you disable, for example, 
insert the written update and save your project. Your access token will provide ability only to read data and the user cannot change it in database. So if you have high risk data to uh, and you anyway need to read it into your application, you can reduce level of assess or for example allow only insert new data so you will not lose any required uh, any any existing data also this token can be very easily rotated you can generate a new token and then replace it in your application so this will prevent you from any cases when your token was inappropriately used exposed and etc or you can just remove your project and create a new one to uh, simply uh, don't allow access to your uh, services anymore. So this is much more secure way when you use gateway like API flow to provide access to your data because we will take care of security of your data. And if you appropriately use access token, if you enable a specific level of access, this will highly increase security of your application. When you work with data from API, it's a, one of the time consuming operation is to create actually models to work with your API, API's result and etc. And how you can reduce time for creation of data models and for parsing of API results, actually you can use a very useful trick as uh, Flutterflow provides to us, it's data models. You can create data models manually or you create data types from JSON. Creation of data types from JSON, I covered in a, a distinct video, but it's very cool feature. So I won't mention it here. You can query API receive result and use this record also to create a new data type. You can import this JSON, for example, this will be order data and just paste here your order data and you will see all fields created. Then you can go to your action and just select that you want to parse result as data type and uh, this is a list. Save it and you will receive access to structured data return it from your API request. Also, if you can't query by some reason, you can't query at the moment and test your data, you can find data sample in uh, API flow always. Here you can copy this data and also pass it into your uh, data types in Flutterflow and this will allow you to create a data type from same data so you don't need to run test query you can just copy sample from uh, api actions list uh, api actions uh, interface in api flow using data types is much more controllable way to work with your data you will receive static parsing you will receive support for data types you will receive ability to control which data is available to application. You can remove fields from here and uh, so Flutterflow will not parse that part of data and just will ignore it and inside of application you will have access only to selected fields. So this is a great feature to control your data, to structure your data and to reduce time for development. I hope you will use it in your applications. Next tip is very important if you work with applications which assess very large amount of data and uh, you cannot load all the data into your interface. For example, you want to show some long list of some records, I will use order list. Uh, in my sample, uh, for example, I have a few dozens of records in my database and I want to show them in my list view in this application. So uh, naturally I bind my uh, API call 
as a data source, I uh, use lease orders. And if I do, uh, don't do any extra settings, if Flutterflow will try to load all data from my, in my database. And if I have a few thousand of records and then dozens of thousands and even maybe hundreds of thousands, this will cause, uh, cause my application to work very slow, to load data very slow with some delays. I will uh, see like strawberry during loading my application and etc. So to reduce time for load data and to provide ability to receive data in portions, Flutterflow provides us with ability to enable infinity scroll. So when we enable infinity scroll, this actually allow us to work with pages of data and API flow generates parameters that allow you to work with offset and limit parameters. So you need to configure offset parameter as amount of loaded items and limit you can set to any limits that you want to preload. For example, this can be like five items. So when you load five items and then you uh, go to a point when your data is full loaded and you want, uh, your user of your application want to scroll down, it will uh, request server for another portion and another and another and uh, so forward until it will reach the end of a list. But this will reduce load time because your data will be loaded in portions. So let's generate our children uh, elements to be able to uh, bind our data to these little tiles, these little containers. So you can see I already set data type for parsing and now I will have ability to name uh, my uh, variable and create generated tiles. And now I will bind bind my text spawn to item and data structure field or the ID, for example. Uh, here I will, one moment, I want maybe to name it in UI ID. Here. So it will not stretch my uh, view. Here I will bind it to data structure field uh, created. Here I will bind it to uh, my order data structure field status. And this one I will bind to combine text. I will use dollar sign and then I will use uh, data structure field total okay confirm and i have my list bound let's check how it will work in the runtime as you remember i bound my list as infinite scroll uh, to my page so we will expect to be able to scroll this list and receive new data while we are scrolling it down so when my application is loaded, it loads initial portion and then as you can see, it loads more, more data and more. And if you will have more data, when you scroll down, it will load a new portions of data, but it loads very fast. So it actually really helps you with ability to boost speed of your initial application load and then of your application performance. I hope this tip will be also useful for your application. While I have many more actually tips to share about different aspects of API integration in Flutterfall, for today I want to share final advice and I hope soon I will share more. So my final advice is related to data filtering. Sometimes developers ask me how better filter data and uh, some even uh, try to find um, uh, some approaches when they uh, load big amount of data into application and then, uh, for example, uh, filter it using 
uh, built in filter conditions in waterfall. This can be very dangerous technique because if your amount of data is very large, it actually will consume long time to filter all list and it will use anyway, it will use much memory in your application, which is very, uh, un, uh, like very, very affected, can very affect performance of your application, especially on mobile devices. So what I advise, always utilize ability to filter data to your server. So when you have API request, and when you have API request, you can do this using API flow and using filter field, which allow you to create complex filter, or for example, using a special field special filter, using one field that you want to filter. And for example, we want to see only draft orders, and this will very boost performance of our application filtering because we will filter data initially using server and we don't need to wait until it will be full loaded. Let's check how it works. So when our application is loading, as you can see, initial data load is very fast because we use server-side query, we use server-side uh, filtering, and besides, it's the debug mode, and it's anyway it takes some time. It works very fast because it do not use extra operations in our application. So please use server-side filtering when it's possible with APIs that provide you parameters to filter your data, and this will highly reduce load on your client-side code on your client-side application logic. I hope these tips will be helpful for your development, for your application performance. Thank you for your attention and have a nice day.